There we go. All right. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here today. Uh, we are recording live streaming this on YouTube for people that maybe have a problem with Zoom, and then the information can be something they can go back to watch, or if you're not able to maybe hear something or understand something. Uh, I we do have. I don't know where they. Okay. We do have um, uh, Spanish interpreters. Um, so if you need anything translated, let me know. Um, we were trying to set up the other room, but that always seems to be an issue. So um, I, I don't see if, if Juan Carlos was in the other room or if he got in or not. I don't think he did. Uh, Dora, are you in contact with Juan Carlos? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know how how that would work now, but, um, but like I said, we can't have the, the two rooms at the same time. Okay, parents, if you can just, um, and I'm just gonna, Miss whoops, Miss Boone, would you mind if I make you a co-host, please? Is that okay? Okay, just in case, um, and our guidance counselor is here too, but I believe she is uh, using her phone. So that's, yes, I do want to make her co -ass. Okay, so um, if you have a question, I'm going to just kind of go over a couple of things. If you have a question, you can drop it in the chat or if you want to talk. I know a lot of people don't like to uh, uh, get in the, on the, the camera thing and that all stuff, but um, I'm going to just show you, or we're going to start with the letter that um, I sent home to all eighth graders last week on Friday. It was on an orange piece of paper. So I'm just gonna pop that up. And this is also available on the website. Are we seeing that? Yep, okay. Okay, so what, what, we, what we do in the eighth grade is students are still promoted. We use the term graduation because it is the easiest thing that people kind of understand. But technically eighth grade students, they, they move up. They get promoted to the ninth grade. Graduation really is the 12th grade. Uh, you know, just like when fifth grade graduation, it's a ceremony, but it's still promotion. We have a ceremony at the end of, of the year for eighth graders. They wear a cap and gown, we take pictures. But in um, reality, graduation takes place in the 12th grade. And now in eighth grade, it's, it's different from every year uh, until now. All promotion from grades uh, one to seven deal with math and ELA primarily. In the eighth grade, students must pass all four core subjects, and that is uh, English, math, science, and social studies. And they have to get a 65. So at the end of the year, if your child gets a 55 in math, they will have to go to summer school. Uh, they are not promoted and they do not walk in a ceremony. Okay, so that's how the two things are linked. The, the ceremony is really a promotional uh, piece. It's, it's a signifying transferring from the eighth grade on to high school. So they have to pass all four of those core subjects. Now, they go to summer school, they pass what they need to pass, they move on to high school, just the same way it will work any other time. But they do miss out on certain, uh, they do miss out on that initial graduation. There is always a summer school graduation. So when we get into the topic of eighth grade dues, paying for a cap and gown, and things of that nature, that's where this comes into play. All right, so the graduation ceremony, moving up ceremony, as it says in the letter, is not an actual technical graduation. And if a child 
does not uh, pass one of those four core subjects, they don't get promoted. Now they have other classes they have to take and that's physical education, foreign language, art and music. Now they do not have to pass that class to be promoted, but they should pass that class because it is an enriching experience and they're going to need what they learn in those classes as they go into high school. Physical education uh, is very important and I'll tell you why. Physical education is not just about uh, running around or playing sports. It's about learning routines of how things are done. When we start letting the students kind of not participate in physical education, it becomes a habit. Then when they get to high school, the habit continues. Now you need four years of physical education when you get to high school. If students don't pass physical education in high school, they will not let them graduate. And I worked in a high school for 10 years. The number of students that were taking three gym classes in their senior year was a good amount sometimes because they felt that, oh, I don't want to do this. I'm doing well. And it's every student. Student could have had a 65 average. Student could have had a 95 average. Kids, some kids don't like physical education, but it is necessary for them to participate. Nobody has to be uh, LeBron James. It, you just have to participate. OK, so really, when your child says they don't want to go to gym, they don't want to do this, they have to participate. It's not a question of just why do I need to do it? The same is true for foreign language and art and music, or what they're taking. Students at this level, we understand that if they don't have a certain uh, attractiveness to say music or art, that doesn't mean that they should not at least participate and do the best they can. We don't want students to get into the habit of thinking that they don't have to do something because it doesn't affect them later on. It, it doesn't help them evolve uh, into a whole person. And that's why we, we stress that a lot. So my rule is they have to be passing all of their classes. That's the expectation. So when we get into things like the eighth grade formal and year end trips, and we haven't planned any year end trips because I'm still waiting for all clear from the DOE on everything, but I'm going to put it out there. They have to be passing all their courses with a 65. Um, no serious history of any disciplinary infractions. They have to be on time. Their attendance has to be good, 92% or higher. Have to pay for the events and things like that. All that information is going to be coming out in the next week or two, but I just want to already start touching base on it uh, because of the fact that I will be updating you monthly. And I'm saying that because there cannot be situations where I have parents uh, coming up to us in June. Uh, saying I didn't, I didn't know about this. So that's why I will, I will make sure that we give that information as much as we can, because, and I understand parents, they get very, you know, emotional towards that end of the year. They want their children to have all these things, but it's a process, uh, and it, it goes through the whole, the whole ten months. Okay. Um, are there, is there anybody in the room that needs uh, some of what I just said in Espanol? Hay alguien aquí en la sala que necesite traducción al español. Por favor, levanten la mano o escribanlo en la caja de chat. Okay. okay. Um, ah, uh, Yancy Panameno. Okay. Um, can you just check with her to see, did she receive the letter on orange paper regarding the eighth grade requirements? Eh, recibió una carta eh, de color naranja en donde estaban eh, indicando los requisitos para los estudiantes de octavo grado. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Uh, does she have any questions about that? Is there anything right now that she has a question about? ¿Tiene usted alguna pregunta relacionada con esa carta? Okay. 
Washington. Voy a abrir su micrófono si quiere. Okay, good. No. Okay, uh -huh. no questions. Everything And is understood. understand. Oh, even yes. I am. Very good. Oh, okay. I know. And now okay. I even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> I've been practicing. Entiende. Uh, yo entiendo un poquito. Okay. Um, so now here's the other big important part. And this is why. Um, so on the other page is the accelerated courses. And we give the Regents exam in both algebra and living environment. And on this page, it breaks down how that looks. Student passes the algebra class. They pass the exam. They're going on to the ninth grade and they're getting high school credit. Student fails the course, but passes the exam doesn't get the promotional criteria and doesn't get the high school credit. Student passes the course, fails the exam, meets the promotional criteria to go to the ninth grade, but doesn't get any high school credit. Uh, fails both the course and exam, no promotion, no credit, and they have to go to summer school. And the same is true for the living environment. Now, the reason I, I'm letting you, I, I want this, it's clear, this. To get the high school credit, the student has to pass the class and pass the exam, okay? Uh, any other combination of that doesn't get them high school credit. So they need both of those. Why does your child need want the high school credit? Because when they get to high school and they've passed both of these exams, they're almost halfway to what they need to graduate. And depending on the high school they go to, that allows them uh, opportunities to take different classes maybe, And it also takes a lot of the pressure off. High school is very challenging. If you thought coming from fifth grade to sixth grade was challenging a couple of years ago, eighth grade to ninth grade is a whole different world. Um, now, I've already spoke with some of the students and they said, but what if I this? And, what, and, and that's another thing we need to work on with our students. Um, their first, a lot of them, their first thing is, what if I fail? It's too hard. I think it's too hard. I have students telling me it's too hard before they've even opened the book. Um, and that's no good. And we have to change that because, and my expectation, my belief, and I've said this to them, they, I believe every one of these children could get a 65. And this is what I told them. If they work, not if they just show up and don't do anything. If they work, if they struggle, you have to struggle. There is nobody that they think is like a great person, a celebrity, an athlete that didn't struggle. And they have to learn how to do that. And we have to support them in that. And even as parents, I know sometimes when it's, oh, I have too much of this, I have too much of that. You have to tell them, I understand, keep trying, keep trying a little. Okay, so we have a question about um the state exams so this is different uh miss ramboran this is different from the new york state exam you can opt out from the new york state exam uh for math and ela i don't encourage it but you can our eighth graders do not take the math state e uh, e um math exam so they take the algebra regions they do not take the eighth grade math so you don't need to opt out of that i don't give them both exams we just give them the one The algebra regents gives them that opportunity to get a leg up in high school. That's why we give it. Um, the whole goal of middle school, junior high school, is to prepare them for high school. And this is kind of one of the best ways to do that. Okay. So the first part of everything we're doing with eighth grade starts with the graduation photos. And that will be on November 9th, 7th? I forgot already. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. It's on the calendar. And for some reason, somebody's messing with me because um, um, I think parent-teacher conference is the 9th. That's why I thought it was that. Yeah. It's the, ninth. It's the 7th, isn't it? Hold on. This one's checking for me. So that's that's the first thing. Seven? Seven. It's the seventh for the yearbook uh, photos. Okay, thank you, Ms. Moon. So on November 7th, your, your children will take, and we're going to send stuff home, but I want you to already understand it because 
I'm basing this on years of miscommunications or misinterpretations by people. So that's why we're starting early. Uh, I actually had the move. Miss Boone had already set up. We typically did it in December. I wanted it earlier because I really need that in everybody's head. So what happens on that day is um, the students, uh, we take the pictures. Now, you don't have to pay for the pictures, but every student takes a picture. They take a picture with the uh, mock cap and gown thing, not the, not the cap, but the 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 blue uh, gown and uh, the gentlemen have a thing where it's a tie and the ladies have um, some kind of collar. They take the picture, they're holding a, a little fake uh, roll of paper and that goes in the yearbook. We take every child's picture. You don't have to buy the picture, you can buy the picture, but we take every child's picture. So on that day on November 7th, and we'll send out reminders you know, I know some parents, this is a very big deal. If you're getting the hair done, make sure they get the hair done if that's what they want and things like that. Um, there's no need to get dressed up. They wear the uniform. It's not a, um, a photo shoot for clothes because they put the blue gown over them. And uh, then they, you know, if, again, if you want, we'll send home what the packages are and you would let us know if you want to purchase pictures. Then after that, you know, anybody who might miss it, we have retakes used later on, but that's, uh, that comes after that. Um, and then we get into really the, the bulk of it in about a month or so, we'll send home things about eighth grade dues. And the money that, um, that we, we have people uh, that we ask for goes towards paying to rent the uh, auditorium at Queens College to get the cap and gown uh, and to get the yearbook. And it, it comes down to all those things, the diploma case. Last year, what I was able to do, and I'm gonna try to do it again, is when the students got their diploma as they walked off the stage, I had the same photographers take a picture right then and there with the diploma case, which a lot of the parents really enjoyed. So we'll, we'll try to do that again. Uh, but that's where that goes for that. Now, in the event you, you pay the, the senior dues, the eighth grade dues, and your child fails one of the four classes, um, we don't give the money back, okay? Because that's, that's what the point is. We, if you're paying for it because you think your child's gonna pass, then great. Uh, they would get the cap and gown, they would do the graduation in the summer. And I'm gonna send all of this home in writing so you understand, but I just wanna make it clear because uh, parents will say, oh, I didn't understand that part. But that's how we, um, we schedule everything, okay? And then, so back to what I was just saying regarding uh, the formal, which is called the prom, any trips, the students need to be working towards passing their classes. We don't wanna get into too much of, uh, which, which the last couple of years, you know, this experience and we want positive experience, but the experience cannot be more important than the reason for coming to school. And the reason to coming to school is to become uh, literate and proficient in ELA and math, science and social studies, going into high school, start figuring about which kind of career they want to go. Do they want to go to college? Do they want to work? Do they want, do they want to try the military? All of these different things. So that's really, that should take precedent. And if every child is working hard and doing what they're supposed to do, they make it. It really is, it's, it sounds so crazy, it's that simple. It's when, if you see your child sitting at home every day playing video games, right? And they never do any work or they never do anything. It should not be a shock if they're failing, okay? The shock should be if you see your child in front of a book on the computer typing all this thing and their grades are low, that should shock you. And that's when you should say, hey, I'm, he's doing it. Maybe there's a problem and you know, definitely contact us. But if you never see your, your child doing any kind of schoolwork or, or any kind of stuff related to school and their grades are low, that should not surprise you, okay? So I know a lot of, they'll tell you they did it, check. 
All right, so let me just stop this point here. Okay, do, any questions? Anybody have any questions? Alguna pregunta en español? Okay. Okay, so now the other thing, um, Ms. Mancuso, have I said anything to incorrect yet? Everything sounds good so okay. far. So far, okay. so good. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. So Ms. Mancuso You're is welcome. the eighth. You, Ms. Mancuso is our uh, your your child's eighth grade uh, guidance counselor, and she will be assisting your child with uh, the high school application. So I'm just going to share. Oh, here we go. Is the personalized high school test mandatory? Oh, um, the specialized high school. Uh, you mean? Um, do you mean like Bronx Health, uh, Bronx Science and Stuyvesant and Brooklyn Tech? Is that what you're talking about, Ms. Miran? Um, hi. Um, hi. I was talking with my son. I really don't understand. He said the personalized high school. He said that is optional, but I want to make sure because sometimes, you know, they say, oh, yeah, that's optional, mom. So I just want to make you. sure. So I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so hold on a second. Okay, so the special, it's the specialized high school. He was close. It's the specialized high school exam. It is optional. Okay. Now last year, um, we gave it at the school. Uh, I, I think they're going to continue doing that. It used to be the students had to go on a Saturday or a Sunday and they had to go to a high school to take the test. Um, they changed that. I had actually signed up before COVID to start hosting the exam here because some parents didn't want, um, I think it was at John Adams one year and I had parents say they didn't want to send their child all the way to John Adams. So, uh, but it is optional. They don't have to take it. Uh, I encourage them to take it because you know, you never know. But if you see right over here, we have this, um, the New York, high, New York City High School and Specialized High School Admissions Guide. Now, problem is this, they have not opened it yet to do applications. That's why I wanted to kind of get you guys ready um, so you're a little ahead of the curve. So for specialized high school, there is a test or audition or an audition um, and the students have to register. If they wanna take it, they have to register. If your son doesn't wanna take it, he doesn't have to do anything. So that's the first thing right there. Uh, and these are the eight specialized high schools, Bronx High School of Science, the Brooklyn Latin School, Brooklyn Technical High School, High School for Math, Science and Engineering at City College, High School of American Studies at Lehman College, Queens High School for the Sciences at York College, Staten Island Technical High School and Stuyvesant High School. LaGuardia, the performing arts is also a specialized, but that is an audition school so they they and that focuses on art music drama dance and things like that miss mancuso do they have to take the test also for that or no for laguardia yes no they do not okay so that's just an audition okay now um for my for my queens residents which is pretty much everybody because we're in queens and i'm from the bronx so i always forget that uh i forget i'm in queens sometimes. so but townsend harris townsend harris is not a specialized high school um they think they are uh and everybody thinks they are and they're a very good school but they are not a specialized high school so they are not on this list townsend harris would be um, a high school you put as um, um, a selection, if you want it. So when do we start applying for high school, Ms. Rambaran? That is an excellent question. Uh, typically, we would start in October uh, before COVID. Um, have they sent you anything, Ms. Mancuso? I haven't heard anything. Um, okay. Usually around this time, I get uh, an invitation to a workshop, which is when they unveil everything and tell us dates and things like that. Um, I haven't heard even about a, my workshop yet. Um, I think last year things were rolled out a little bit later and I think that's what they're probably going to do again this year um, because they have phased out round two. 
Um, yes. so now they can, they only have one round of applications. So, um, because of that, they probably feel they can start later. So everything in the system is reflecting last year's information. Um, so I don't have any current eighth graders codes of any kind or anything like that. Everything is still looking like last year. So I have, re have not received anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, we don't know. I did hear that. Mayor Adams, I think, was at a, a something or not Mayor Adams, uh, Chancellor uh, Banks was at a um, something the other day or yesterday where they did one of the sound bites was that they were working on the application process, what they were going to do. And that um, he said that maybe in a few days we would they would have some more information. Um, John Carlos or, or Dora, I see Miss. Panameno has a question, and I think it says, when can you apply to the high schools, and how do we know where our special I, need, uh, kids <laughs> with special needs should apply? Okay. Oh, okay. So the question is, it's just about the high school application? Yes. It's, uh, two questions. Uh, when, when can you apply for high school? And the other okay. one is... Uh, how to know where to apply for for kids with special needs. Okay, so you can tell her that um, they haven't opened the application process yet for the high school. Eh, no han abierto todavía eh, las, eh, las aplicaciones para el high school. Okay, and for students with special needs, it's it's the same process as all the I'm sorry. Eh, eh, para niños con eh, especiales eh, todo, es lo mismo. Todavía no han abierto para las aplicaciones. Otra pregunta. Eh, para, para aplicar, eh, ellos tienen que hacer un examen. Y, y si ellos no lo desean hacer, ¿se puede o tiene que ser obligatorio hacerlo? Another question. If they have to apply and they need to do a, a, a test, a previous test, they have to do it or, or is optional? Oh, the, the specialized high school is optional. Eh, eh, para niños especiales es opcional. Y no, y no, perdón, y no perjudica al niño en algo. Uh, and it's not uh, harmful for the kid in something, some areas? Um, I don't understand. What, uh, could you say that again? Eh, ¿Puede repetir la pregunta, por favor? Que si no, uh, ok, por no hacer el examen, no le perjudica a él a entrar a la high school. If he doesn't, if he doesn't want to take the, the high school test, um, it's going to be um, bad for him or it's going to affect him in, in some no. way? No, 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 no. The, the specialized high school is these uh, these eight schools. He doesn't have to take the test for that. Regular, the regular high schools don't have a test. Sí, lo, lo, los eh, high school regulares no tienen, eh, no tienen una prueba que dar. Okay, muchas gracias. Y para okay. los exámenes que vienen del Estado para este año, perdón. And for the regions for, for this year. Oh, yeah, he should, he or she should take the exam, but if they don't, it, it won't hurt them if they don't pass it. Eh, sí, lo, lo puede tomar, pero si no lo pasa, eh, lo tiene que tomar, pero eh, si no lo pasa, no, no, no es un problema, ¿no? Ok, muchas gracias, les agradezco. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. No problem. Ok, so then now with the high school, um, so here's where everybody needs to just double check uh, things about the My Schools account. So I'm just going to flip over to this. So this is the page for the My Schools account. This is where the students and the parents will go in and they look at where to, what high schools they apply to. It's not opened yet because they haven't started it. But if you go to, uh, the web address is uh, www.myschools.com. Hold on. I need the school's account. Okay, you got it. Uh, and then this is the My Schools um, website. They haven't opened the process yet, but if you go to that site, right, this page will open. You can translate it up here to the language you need to speak. So if you speak Espanol, 
if you go here and you click Espanol, it will translate the page uh, in Espanol. Um, um, if you need to speak it in, I think that's Haitian Creole. It's Haitian Creole, so that helps you out. So I'm gonna go back to English so I don't make a mistake. Uh, so, but now you see this, it says welcome. Okay, and if you scroll down, browse the school directory and you click start browsing and it says high school, all right? And you just click that. And so right up in here, you could put your, your address and it'll give you a list of schools that are close by or you, um, you wanna, you're interested in school. So I'm gonna type in a school and I'm gonna type in Martin Van Buren. And here's Martin Van Buren. Now I typed in Martin Van Buren because today I, I spoke with the principal from Martin Van Buren today, Ms. Nettleford. Um, she's very passionate about um, changing the direction of Martin Van Buren. She's got a lot of programs she's already started. And um, they were doing, um, they have robotics, they have a medical science research program that they work with, uh, with Queensboro, the law academy they have, and they're actually already partnered with Georgetown University. Uh, so they have a lot of things going on there. Don't get caught up in reputations, things change. Okay, so, but I'm just bringing that up. So if you clicked on Martin Van Buren, it tells you where it is. It gives you their website. Um, the new, and so let's just click that. It'll open up the new tab. Um, the new Martin Van Buren. And they have the website here and you can you know, learn about the school. That's the best way to kind of check things. But it, it gives you information about the schools. Oh, there she is, Nettleford, yes. Um, and it tells you the performance. It gives you stats. It gives you the languages they offer the courses, advanced placement courses, um, activities, sports, uh, other things like that. Institute for Law, this is one of their um, uh, academies. It gives you uh, a breakdown. It tells you how many seats they have uh, available each year. They tell you if you have a student with disability, how many seats they have. So it really breaks it down. And this is for every school. So you want to um, check that out. Uh, Miss De Alicantara, you have a question. Yes, I just want to know if it is um, mandatory to take um, program in the high school because I was looking for it. There is a lot of pro like math, science, stuff like that. But my son said that he doesn't know what to take. I just want to know if he, that is mandatory. Is what mandatory? Taking math and science? To take, no, to take a program, to go into a program. In high school, you mean, right? Yes. No, it's, not, it's, it's, mandatory. it's mandatory to go to high school, but every school has different programs. So if your son doesn't want to go into, if they say they chose uh, Matt Martin Van Buren, and that they have a program here for STEM, uh, for robotics and engineering, that's heavily math and science. He, he, he shouldn't pick that program. Um, if he was interested in maybe law, he could pick that. But every student in high school, they are mandated to take um, two, two years of science and three years of math or it, it's, a, it's a combo. It's two years of math, three years of science, or two years of science, three years of math. But they do have to take math and science in high school. Does that help you? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is there any way to see which high schools have sports teams or we have to look at each school's website? Hmm, that is a great question. Uh, typically, you can go at each high school you're interested in, or hold on a second, I haven't done this in forever. Um, you could go to the PSAL, uh, Ms. Badahona, uh, and I will drop that link in the chat as well. And 
PSAL is the Public School Athletic League, and they have all the teams. So if you look at um, uh, if you look at the sports, I believe when you click on it, it tells you uh, which schools participate. Uh, I'll just click fencing and hope that. So here it tells you Queens, um, all, all boroughs. So it shows you all the boroughs. So it breaks it down and it can tell you where the schools are too. Uh, if you want to do a quicker like that. Francis Lewis has fencing, Townsend Harris has fencing, Cardoza, uh, high school teaching, Benjamin Cardoza. If I went to the Bronx, well, there's no events today, but that's that's for the boroughs. But um, uh, basketball, they can show you that too. Um, if you just, oh, and you can also search by here, it says schools. <laughs> uh, I haven't been on the PSAL website a long time, uh, but you definitely, and it's much better than it used to be, but it does give you some information here uh, that could probably narrow your search down. I learned today that Martin Van Buren does not have a football team and never did, uh, but they've got this great football field uh, that apparently they don't use. So. But all of this information, again, so another one that people like is Thomas Edison. There we go, Thomas Edison and Career Technical. And they have a website too. If you're interested in career technical education, Thomas Edison is a great school too to go to. Uh, it's very close by here. So if you live in the neighborhood, it's not very far. Uh, I've walked to Thomas Edison, it takes about 20 minutes. 25 maybe, but yeah, if you walk quick. Uh, and they've got a lot of stuff there too. You can check out them. Um, but again, the My Schools is the best place to start. They do not send home the big, thick um, books anymore. The high school directories, they no longer print those. You have to go online and do it. We will put all of these links on our website too, because I know sometimes it's like, where was that place? Where was that? Ours are five letters, IS, not letters, five characters, is238.com. And Miss um, Boone does a fabulous job. I think there's probably even a section for that when we get to it. And then you could just go there. So the best thing to always do is kind of check with us and then you can find things a lot easier. But we'll have this stuff up here and we're gonna give you a lot more information as we go along. But I know people have been asking, the, the big issue again has been, um, you know, we've come out of this pandemic now, it seems pretty well, and everybody wants to kind of pick up where they left off, which I totally understand. Uh, the DOE is is doing the best they can, uh, you know, and um, hopefully they do a better job, but we're here to try to make sure that that uh, goes along. Ms. Boone, did you have something? No. Yeah, somebody asked about the codes for the My Schools. Can you explain that the codes for applying for high school is different from codes for the NYC school account? Yes. Um, hold on, I'm just I'm going to have. To, I'm just typing a message. I'm going to have someone contact her tomorrow. Uh, so the 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 NICSA or the NYC, the when you go to look at your grades, the ones where you go check your child's attendance, that account is different from the my schools. I know. So what will happen is you're going to get a new um, account. You're going to get information. You're going to get a pin. And what's going to happen is a letter will be generated giving you a password or they'll send you an email. They may send an email to that account, the, the Nixa account, but it's a separate account. Uh, and we haven't gotten that yet. What they do is they give it to us. They send it home. Uh, and then, you know, if people have moved or they didn't get the mail, that becomes a problem. But as soon as we get the information, we usually print it out and give it to the kids uh, as well. And then we let you know. So you don't have to worry about that just yet. It hasn't. That's why I'm saying you can go to that. You don't have to log in and you can just um, browse the schools. Uh, but they haven't opened up the portal yet and they haven't issued any of the, um, they call it a pin to, to give you access to. Hold on. Okay. Um, so how does high school accept the students? Does it go according to the grades in middle school or are passing the regions? 
It, it doesn't have anything to do with the regents uh, because they, they're not basing anything on this year's grade. So everything a child does in the eighth grade is not where they base it on. They base it on seventh grade. Uh, and I believe they're still using the state exams to kind of base things to, but they have changed everything the way they're doing it. And it's really not, I don't know, Ms. Mancuso, do you have any more insight on that? Because I know they were changing a lot of uh, uh, stuff. Um, the only thing I know that they've stopped doing is um, using attendance for admissions. Um, in the past, they used attendance. I Since I know last year they didn't, they stopped. This year, I don't know if they're gonna start using it again. I'm gonna assume no. Um, but for the most part, it is, in the past, it has always been seventh grade grades is what they look at, state ELA and math scores. Um, they do not use, we do not write teacher recommendation letters. We don't use guidance recommendation letters. Um, some schools do have tests of their own that they ask you know, students to come in and take at their own school, which is separate from the specialized high school exam, but that's their own thing. That's their own admissions process. Um, but I haven't heard anything new for this year. This is just kind of my experience from the past. Okay. Um, I'm just was looking to see if they had a uh, pupil path, pupil path, uh, pupil path was um, shut down. Uh, pupil path was shut down by the Department of Ed um, at the end of last year. There is no more pupil path. Uh, they illuminate uh, education that uh, ran a scheduler had uh, data issues, uh, security issues. So the Department of Education basically canceled their contract. So that's why we don't have it. Um, the seventh grade test scores were sent to every, all parents' um, NYC schools account um, at the end of the summer. Uh, they, they sent them, they said they sent them to um, to all the parents. It might be on the, um, I'm gonna just write that down on a piece of paper, hold on. I got a lot going on over here, so I don't know where I put things. <laughs> There's a lot of movement going on, but um, I will check that out, Ms. Barahona. Uh, we can always get you the grade to, uh, you know, send it to you in an email, um, but yes, that's the, it's the, the NYC, NYCSA account, Ms. Isaac, it's um, the one where the grades are, we can look at the attendance, that's the one. It's not my school is the, my school's account is for the high school application. The, the, NYC's, high school application. the NYC school's account is for all, everything else. But NYC's um, account is for everything else. But uh, the link is on our website. Oh, okay. Um, yes, they do still have zoned high schools, but when you apply to the high school, that's where you you have to select that program. So, um, hold on, let's pull up. Uh, No, the high schools only look at the seventh grade when they get the information, uh, Ms. C. Paul, they don't look at um, the current stuff. However, I will, I will tell you, in the event you, in the event you were not happy with the school that you were given and you tried to appeal or do everything or put on a waiting list and the DOE gave you a hard time and they told you that that's the school you're going to go to. In that event, if next year in August, late August, early September, there was a school you wanted to go to and you took, took your child there and you said, listen, do you have a seat available to me? If your child has two regents exams, um, they're gonna move you a little further up the line. Uh, that's, that's not an official stance. I'm just telling you that if they have people, so if a whole bunch of students show up at 
I don't know, say Cardoza, that they want to transfer their child in Cardoza. And if, you know, they have a, a waiting list, they're putting people's names down and maybe they'll call you if somebody gets discharged or maybe something like that. Um, I, I got to believe that if you, you're showing them your child's grades uh, from what they, and they had two regions exam, you know, I, I would think that someone's going to put a little asterisk next to that child's name. You know, it's not a guarantee, but it, it doesn't hurt. But they do not look at uh, that. They do not look at, um, at the, because they don't have the results. When they make the decision, the child uh, has not taken the exam yet. They make the high school decisions um, usually in March, April. Uh, okay, so let me just see here. So, okay. Okay, so um, Ms. Barahona, when you get to the, when you go to like, I just typed in Hillcrest because it's down the block. Uh, if you scroll all the way down on any of these high schools, they give you the programs, okay? And then zoned. Any school that has a zone still puts the zoned at the bottom and you click that and um, it just tells you the priority thing, interest area. So what that means is on the high school application, when you open it, if you were looking at Hillcrest and you went on the you went on this, the My Schools account, it's going to list all of these programs. You apply to which programs in the school. So say somebody, say you live across the street from Hillcrest and you really just want to have your kid to go to Hillcrest because it's right across the street. So to increase your chances of going to Hillcrest, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine programs, okay? You could apply to all of those programs for Hillcrest, uh, and then you could apply to uh, some other ones. You have to check though on the recommend on what the requirements are. A zoned would mean you live in the area. So if you just clicked zoned and you lived across the street, odds are you know you have a pretty good chance because you live across the street and you picked the zoned uh, program. If you pick the pre med school of scientific research. Priority groups open to New York City residents. Their admission method is screened. Students are admitted based on their course grades and or school-based assessment. Average course grades, 100%. Okay, so they do screen the grades for that program. Um, I don't think this is correct. I think they just have that up there. 100% seems a little uh, high to me, but that's, that's how they do it. Yes, Ms. Barona. Sorry, I know I'm it's asking okay. a whole bunch of questions. That's I what actually, I'm here for. I actually work in DOE and work in a high school, so I'm familiar with those requirements. But oh. I have a question about um, if a student has a IEP, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's self-contained, 15 to 1, 12 to 1, 1, or just extended time and counseling or whatever it is, how do you know when you're applying to those high schools that they can service that IEP? A very good question. Now they, uh, and the best thing with that is, um, is to speak with uh, the, the Ms. Mancuso, the guidance counselor, because if you have specific schools um, that you're thinking about and they're not listing the information there, then the next thing is we would reach out uh, to find out about these things. Uh, you always want to check that because of the fact that you don't want to be in a situation where your child shows up there and then an administrator tells you, yeah, we don't do that here. We only do ICT, um, which they're not allowed to do, as you probably know. But, um, but that would be, um, that would be, Man Ms. Mancuso, does that sound somewhat accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. And all I've had students um, who are in ICT get accepted to Towns and Harris. So, um, you know, just as an example to show you, like, any students with IEPs can apply pretty much anywhere. Um, obviously, some schools will have more options in terms of self-contained and um, the services they offer. Um, but yeah, you can, and they probably wouldn't let you apply in the system, the website wouldn't let a student apply um, if they could tell, you know, what IEP services you need. Um, so they would be able to kind of, you can kind of get it filtered out. 
Um, but that's always a conversation. If you want to call me or email me specifically, I can always look into the schools that um, have special education seats. And that also is on my schools um, yeah. as well. It'll tell you it has special education seats. Yeah. Like if you go right, students with disabilities, they have nine applications. They have 11 seats for the visual arts at Hillcrest. Um, and this is, this is old data. Uh, you know what I'm showing everybody here. This is old cause they haven't, but they do, they do list that stuff. But if, if you like, like, uh, we said the best way is to reach out, we'll reach out and find out. We've had this in the past with children that were, had a physical disability. Uh, they wanted to go to a school and no one ever thought to check if they had an elevator, you know, and it was one of those things where, I mean, we've learned a lot in like, you know, 10, 12 years, but that was, that was an issue. The, the student was go, they accepted her and then they found out that they didn't have an elevator. Um, and she, she needed, um, an elevator to do things. So definitely we'll, we'll look, and that'll definitely be a conversation to have with Miss uh, Mancuso. Uh, a list of high schools? No, we don't, um, we're not going to send you, we're going to post the stuff. It, all the high schools are on, um, the, my schools, uh, site. But uh, Ms. Mancuso, again, is going to go over with the students. She makes an appointment with them, goes over. And if you have any questions, you can ask her. We also kind of like want you to know to be, we'd like for you to be a part of it too, because we don't want students, we don't want your children put in high schools that you don't want them to go to, because um, that's a problem. Like if your child is put in Long Island City, and you're like, Long Island City, he's not going to Long Island City. That's that's too far. You know, and we look at those things. And Miss Mancusa reaches out if she thinks that something doesn't look right. But it's always great uh, to actually contact us uh, about that stuff if you have any questions, because then we just cut right through any miscommunications. Okay. Um, I, I just want to add too. So um, again. I'm sorry, it's dinner time in my house and I have a three-year-old, so it's a little crazy. Um, but um, I, um, tip, I, go, I plan on making a Google Classroom and inviting all the eighth graders to that. Um, and anytime I receive any update, I post it to the classroom almost immediately. Um, I would love to get parent emails as well. Um, so, and I'm gonna post my email address um, right now I don't have a landline phone, uh, for my office, but, um, I'm okay. You know, you guys can reach me, um, through email, or if you call the school, they can connect you to me. Um, we can always make appointments and meet. Um, and yes, I do set up appointments with students further down the line. I have created my own list of schools in the area, um, and break it down by the programs that they have. Um, and sometimes kids just like to go off of that and pick schools from there. I go over a distance and Long Island City, Staten Island, <laughs> you know, things to avoid. Um, these are all things I go over with students as a class in small groups, individually. Um, and I'm happy to meet with parents at any time. Thank you, Ms. Mercuso. So uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Harmakun did ask about open houses. Uh, the high schools usually have their individual open houses. Uh, in the past, we've had our own high school fair, and I am uh, currently talking to a couple of the high schools to, you know, maybe come here and have something in the, in the gym is where we used to have it, where parents can come and they set up a table and things like that. So all of that, yeah, we're just, we're really, uh, and this, um, it's why I wanted to start this conversation in September because I want everybody to be on that page and you're talking to your children about that. And hopefully they're talking to the kids whose parents weren't here and it gets it going because um, you want to have the, the most information you can have uh, better to have more than less. So we're definitely doing all these things uh, and we will be sending a lot of more information out about that. Okay. So this was just like, you know, an intro. Uh, yes, Ms. Boone. I just wanted to say that we will also post as we uh, get the information on the website on a calendar for 
all open houses um, as high schools send the information to the guidance counselors and myself be on social media and the website. Yep. Thank you. You were doing the you were doing the slow Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, <laughs> so um, that's what we're going to, like she said, always check the school website, the social media. She posts things constantly up there about what's going on. And, um, and um, uh, we'll have more information as we get it. But uh, I just I said I wanted to just start the ball rolling. I, I have very high expectations of this, uh, of this class, of this class. Uh, class of 2023, as should you, but together, and we have to work together with them, and we have to, we got to push them, uh, because that's what, that's what they need. Uh, I don't mean that in a negative way, I mean that in a, in a good supportive coaching way. The, our, our students, our children today, they need to be a little, uh, they got to be encouraged, they got to learn a struggle, um, because that's how you learn. If you, if you can't uh, work through some things at times, it, it doesn't help you out. You know, it's good to it's good to let somebody sit there sometimes and figure it out, and don't just give them the easy answer. Uh, it builds a lot of skills that we take for granted. So, uh, thank you. If any, does anybody have any final questions before um, we shut this down? No. Okay. Alguien tiene una pregunta antes de que te, terminamos con la junta el día de hoy. Okay. All right. Well, nope. oh. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, good. Go ahead. Okay. So about my child passing grade and all everything, her tests and how she's doing, where will those things be posted on Google Classroom or, or NYC schools account? Her, her, all her grades will be the NYC schools account. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And we'll, and if your child is struggling or anything, you give us a call. We'll have the teachers because this has been a big thing that we need. You need to know uh, quicker, not later. So yes. to keep, yeah. And that's, all that's time. absolutely. Yes. Do all never right. be afraid. Never be afraid to call this school and want to know what's going on. <laughs> all right. Thank <laughs> okay? you. Okay. You're welcome. Um, Ms. Rambaran, I don't know what that test is, the mayor. What, I think that's a, a literacy thing, and I think it's for lower grades, um, what he's talking about. Um, it's not anything with us. I think it's an elementary school thing, uh, what he's talking about. It's like a, a phonics thing or something, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not, it doesn't really affect, it's not us. I know that, yeah, okay. All right, everybody, thank you so much. It was great to see and talk to some of you. And I hope we can start doing these more in person. But this is a great option, too, if you can't get out of the house. So we'll figure out a way to do them both. All right. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you.